Yeah, Assalamualaikum, a very good day. We are Biomedical Engineer from Unicare ABMI. I would like to present the PPM checklist of ESC, which is Electro Surgical Unit. My name is Muhammad Amir Rizad bin Rahmat. And my name is Muhammad Amir Rizad bin Kamal. And my name is Muhammad Akram bin Rosli. And my name is Muhammad Aiman Hazim bin Muhammad Nisa. Mine is Nofakria Nazira Binti Ramli. And my name is Anis Amira Binti Rizal. Okay, for the device that we want to present today is basically electro surgical unit. The model is Force FX and the brand is Welly Lab, which is the manufacturer. So before that, uh, we would like to start the part one, which is Aiman will explain regarding uh, the asset details and special precaution. Thank you, Amirul. So I, my name is Mama Aiman Hazim once again, and I will explain about the part one and part two, which is asset details and special precaution. So first, here we have to insert the asset number, which is a special code that is given by the manufacturer for specific devices, which means uh, each devices have their own specific codes, specific asset number. And then, as Amiru said, this model is Force FX8C and the uh, manufacturer is Valley Land, Valley Lab. The PPM frequency is 12, which is monthly. We do the PPM frequency once per year. And lastly, the location is usually at OT, which is Operating Theatre. Enough for part one, then moving on to part two, special precautions. First, if there is evidence of body fluid contamination, submit the device for cleaning and decontamin and we have to decontamination before we inspecting it. Then wear appropriate personal protection equipment, PPE, during the PPM work. Then wear grounded electrostatic wristband when handling PCB or electronic components. This is to ensure the any leaking currents will be grounded and to ensure the safety. Next, refer to the safety procedure procedure for additional precautions and guidance as per manufacturer guidelines. And lastly, make sure the test equipment used are duly calibrated. That's all for me. Thank you. Okay, my name is Nova Kriya and I will explain about task two and task three. So, oh, part three and part four, sorry. Okay, so uh, about qualitative task. Okay. Okay, so uh, for test uh, equipment that we are needed for this PPM for, uh, is, uh, I know, our uh, electrical safety analyzer and electrosurgical analyzer. So for the asset number, you can get uh, the, for the asset number and calibration, calibration date, you can uh, get from the sticker behind um, the, behind the uh, ESU or up the ESU. Okay, next uh, is part four, qualitative task. Okay, so uh, first, um, okay, for this task, once until 14 is, um, uh, we have to check first and then decide whether the device uh, is passed, fail or an A, not available. Okay, so first, first uh, the cases. The cassette is an uh, external uh, ESU. You have to check whether it's damaged or broken. So uh, you have to check whether it's pass or fail. So for the mount, uh, mount or fastener, the the place that you have to um, put the ESU uh, onto, uh, make sure uh, you have to shake it. Um, uh, make sure um, the mount is strong enough to support the ESU. Okay, for the caster break, uh, okay, you have this um, require you, you to uh, shake the uh, mount uh, uh, to check uh, whether the brake is uh, properly work, working or not. 
Okay, so for the SC plug and the power cord, you have to check. Uh, oh, you have to plug in the uh, power, uh, the SC plug, and then check whether the uh, ESU is power on off or off. Uh, so if it's off, you have to replace the SC plug or check um, uh, the or replace it. Just re replace it. So for strain relief, strain relief. This is one example for the strain relief. Um, you have to check whether it's broken or uh, in a good condition, and then you uh, you take it. And then for the cables and the fitting connectors, you have to check uh, the insulation first. The insulation of the cable, whether it's broken or not, and then um, you have to. Uh, you have to check the condition whether it's good to uh, use or not. Then if it's not, you have to uh, take as fail. And for the control and switches, uh, you have to, uh, that's a keypad on the ESU. Uh, you have to press it whether it's working uh, and it show the right uh, accurate uh the the thing that you have pressed like if you sh uh, if you press the mono then it show the mono and its range and then for the indicator or display uh the lcd for the esu uh it show the it display the uh, the true number uh, the true value or not so for audible signal it is uh for example it is alarm uh if it sounds good and uh, loud louder uh, and it's a thick as best because it's um, can use and it is working. So for the accessory, uh, usually it is foot switch. You can um, you uh, you can check it. Uh, try to press it whether it's working, or if not, uh, if it's the ESU is not um, came uh, came together with the foot switch. Uh, just just uh, take it as not available. N A. So for the REM test, uh, pressure electrode. Uh, so you have to, uh, you have to uh, check the indicator. If it's green, that means you apply it um, properly. And if it uh, shows red, uh, show red, uh, that that means uh, there's something wrong uh, with your uh, while you applying the uh, the cab or uh, the pressure electrode. Okay. That's all for me. Thank you. Okay. All right. For the part five, this is about preventive maintenance tasks. What kind of tasks that we have, which is we need to uh, clean the cleanliness, which is the two, we need to clean the equipment, which is in the column, we have the three available, which is done, not done, also not available. So what's kind of the cleanliness of the equipment? For example, very well to centralize, inspect patient leads and Regulating and populating tip for activity and cleanliness and bit of tissue or carbon that would interference with the proper function or we need to clean all the electrical contact. For the part six is quantitative task. For the quantitative quantitative task we have the two which is monopolar output test also bipolar output test. What is Monopolar output test. Monopolar mode is electrical current is delivered to the patient via an active cable and electrode, which is uh, current returned to the unit through the to a written electrode pad or plate to speak and return the current, thus to preventing focus heat, which is can cause burn. So, uh, for the function, we have a two, which is cut and coagulating. In the card, we have a low, pure, and also the blend which is we put the load uh, 300 ohm and we set at 80 watt and we will measure the range is about 479 until 553. So uh, for the uh, for the coagulating, which is uh, desiccate, fulgurate and also the spray, the load is 500 ohm and we set a value at uh, 80 watt and we measure the value, which is the range is 372 until 428. All these, uh, the rated value based on the service manual for this device. All right, thank you, that's all. Okay, so I will uh, continue the presentation. So uh, for quantitative tasks, so uh, basically as you know, we have uh, two monopolar and bipolar 
Okay, so I will explain more about a bipolar output test. So what is the bipolar output test? So bipolar output test is the current flows from one time to the other through the tissue held between the process. So as the, uh, the bipolar uses uh, use a lower voltage, so less energy is, re is required, but because it has a limited ability to cut and, and coagulate the large bleeding areas, it is more ideally used uh, for the for those procedure where tissue can uh, be easily grabbed on both uh, sides by the process. So uh, for the function for bipolar output test, we have a tree which is uh, precise, standard, and micro. So we put the load is 100 ohm for that for that uh, for that one, and and we set the value is uh, the set value is a 10 watt. And uh, for the precise, uh, we put the 10 watt, and uh, and the limit for that one is a 299 until uh, 333. So and then uh, for the next one, the standard function is uh, we put the load a 100 ohm. And uh, the set value for that one is also 10 watt, and the range for this one is uh, 299 until 333. And one for the function for bipolar output test is the macro, and we put the load is 100 ohm for the unit is uh, milliampere, and uh, and uh, we set the value is a uh, 10 watt and the range for that one is uh, also 299 until 323. So that's all for uh, quantitative quantitative tasks for the bipolar output test. Okay, I will explain about electrical safety test and the noise and communication part. Okay, on this part, electrical safety test is helped to prevent the hazard and EHT is important because to ensure uh, while the patient to ensure the patient and the staff is safe while using the equipment. Okay, uh, for the safety analyzer, we use a flux model. On uh, on the attach attachment part, the result will uh, of the test will be attached on that part. Okay, for the uh, part A, not not any recommendation. The engineer will be notched down if, if the equipment have any damage or faulty. Uh, for example, uh, battery. If battery on the equipment is damaged, the engineer will notch down that battery will be replaced or uh, changed. That's all for me. Okay. For, okay. for this part is conclusion where we conclude everything regarding this, this uh, PPM uh, PPM maintenance. Okay, at this part also we will determine whether the device is functioning or not functioning, or we want to determine whether the device need to be need to be corrective or not, which means this device need to be repaired or not. And also at this part where uh, the device will be mentioned regarding the next PPM service, as will be mentioned by the the engineer that that produced this uh, EST test. And then also, uh, the the one need to be mentioned is the date and the time, and also the name of the engineer that uh, doing this EST test, and also the stamp of the company or uh, the one that represent to do this maintenance task. And then after that, the one that verify this uh, job is that by the department of the of the task itself, which is for ESU usually at operation theater OT. So that it need to be verified by the head of department of the OT itself, or the one that will be uh, stay at the counter, uh, the staff, so that they need to verify, jot down the date and the department of the the part itself, and also the signature of the company or the hospital itself. So therefore, uh, after doing part one until part nine, we can conclude that this device is safe to be used by the user or the patient itself. So therefore, it concludes our presentation regarding the PPM checklist of the electrostatic unit. Thank you, everyone.